President Hinckley, Elder Maxwell, Elder Larson, President Young and Cannon, beautiful primary girls and young women, and my beloved Relief Society sisters. We have come together to speak of things we have in common, although our ages and stages in life and circumstances create different challenges. Even so, the scriptural words of that beautiful hymn the choir has just sung should be the statement for all of us, young and older, the Lord is the strength of my life. I hope through this message we will have manifested and affirmed in our hearts the reality that the principles of the gospel are timeless and timely, and that eternal truths supply precise answers for our present need. Such needs are notable in their diversity and demanding in their urgency. But in groping for answers, we sometimes overlook the evident, for good solutions often lie not so much in the undiscovered as in the unused. When the Lord restored the gospel to the earth in its fullness and purity, he also organized the church as a means to turn precept into living principles to help believers become saints, and become saints they did when as converts they were drawn by their compelling faith to put precept to the test. And in the strength of the Lord, they saw goals achieved, hopes realized, and their own strengths grow. In a gripping account of the Martin Handcart Company, caught by early winter storms in the trek from Iowa City to Salt Lake Valley, we read of Margaret Dalglish, a stout Scottish girl, worn down to skin and bones, but still keeping up. After wading through rivers of slush ice, suffering blizzards, hunger, and loss of loved ones, she was among those who were still hauling their battered carts and still walking defiantly on their own legs as they entered the valley at last. While the demands made upon women in pioneer days may seem to be of more heroic proportions than those commonly faced by women today, yet in a sense, we share the whole range of problems. Disease, divorce, drugs, death, immorality, economic insecurity, abuse, loneliness, depression, single parenthood, and on and on problems with which women have always struggled and with which they now must contend. We are in a time when the swift changes of our social structure are thrusting enormous challenges upon us. And we must remember that the work of women is important and still must be done. The spirit children of God must have the experience of mortality. And the, that means that babies must be wanted nurtured, loved, and cared for. The Lord has given to women a primary responsibility in the establishment of good homes and well-cared-for families. And no matter what the challenges are, we must find ways to accomplish this life-giving and eternal work. Good family life is never an accident. It is always an achievement. It was so for the women of the past, and it is so for us today. Our lives require discipline, coping without compromise, conversion of precept into living principles that will make us saintly. We can see examples about us today. Consider the sister who, just recently baptized, accepted a position to teach a Relief Society lesson. When she could not arrange transportation one Sunday morning, she walked the 11 miles to the meeting house and gave her lesson in order to honor her commitment. A visit by a Relief Society president to an inactive deaf sister revealed that it hurt too much to go to the meetings and never be able to join in the discussion. As the president left that home, she promised the sister that if she would attend her Relief Society meetings, she would be included. The president and her entire board learn to sign. Gratitude, satisfaction, and personal enrichment came as this new skill was employed to respond to the need of that one individual. The husband of a Relief Society sister was killed in a disastrous automobile accident, leaving his wife and three young children without means of support 
or much security. Upon taking stock of her circumstances, personal resources, and talents, the courageous wife worked out a plan whereby she could complete her education and provide financial sustenance for the family during the hours the children were in school. Through the application of thrift and discipline and reliance on the Lord, the needs of the family were met and kind, loving care was given to the sisters' aged parents as well. Even as the Lord organized the church, we who have the gospel need also to organize our lives to do what has to be done to become doers of the word, and in the doing, come to know the strength in the Lord. That strength comes when we prepare for his blessings, recognize them, and use his gifts to make his ways our ways. In the beloved Latter-day Saint hymn, O My Father, Eliza R. Snow celebrates in words the continuity of family relationships beyond death and reminds us of a glorious reunion with our heavenly parents. Written as a solace to a dear friend, Zina Huntington, who had lost her mother and father in tragic deaths, the well-known lines of this hymn give poetic statement to a great truth revealed through the prophet Joseph Smith. By looking closely, we can find in that single incident in the Church's history some of the gifts God has given to strengthen Latter-day Saint women. Revealed truth, priesthood leadership, individual talents, and opportunities for service. These are available to every woman and can give us the power to triumph over the most difficult circumstances and move forward in strength. In just rendering compassionate service to a friend, Eliza Arsenault used her talents, responded to priesthood leadership, and gave memorable expression to reveal truth. In a very real sense, when Joseph Smith knelt in the sacred grove and asked his question, it was for each of us. The answer he received provides a sure foundation of fundamental truths upon which we should structure our lives. He also demonstrated through personal prayer that eternal truths answer individual needs. Heavenly power can help us understand and relate the timeless to our immediate concerns. Whatever your circumstances, this can be your season of strength because one of the most compelling concepts in the gospel is that the Savior will come again. And he counsels, Behold, I come quickly. We must live with con the constant anticipation of His coming, being ready to receive Him in the position of our greatest strength. Let this be our bulwark against temptation or slothfulness. Let it cause us to read His words, to search our hearts, and tr to try to live every principle of righteousness He taught. This will require us to love as He loves. Then we are told when he comes, we shall know him, for we shall be like him. May the Lord be our light and our salvation. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.